You boys be quiet down there! Welcome back to PC-98 Paradise, the series where we take a close look at classic games for the NEC PC-98, the most popular Japanese PC series of the early 1990s. Today I'm going to be playing a game based on the popular 90s anime Slayers, and I think you'll find this video interesting whether you've ever seen the anime or not. But if you haven't, I'd recommend you check it out someday if you're interested in anime at all. It's one of the earliest long-running series I can think of that successfully combines your typical JRPG-style fantasy world with comedy. Of course, there were a number of games based on Slayers released in the 90s, but the 1994 PC-98 title was the first, and was a completely different game from all the console releases. In fact, the game was made so early, Slayers wasn't even an anime yet. There were only the Slayers light novels at the time. The game was developed by a game development subsidiary of the animation company AIC, called AIC Spirits, who developed a number of mostly anime licensed games during the 90s. As a side note, the AIC Spirits name was also used again for an animation division of AIC unrelated to game development during the 2000s. How confusing. Among the three games AIC Spirits made with Band Presto for PC-98, two of them were ported to the PCFX, and one of them also to the PC Engine, but their Slayers game remained a PC-98 exclusive. Maybe today you'll see why. But personally, what really got me into this game, surprisingly, is the soundtrack. I really like the music in this game. So without further ado, let's take out Slayers for PC-98. It comes in a black case covered by a cardboard sleeve. Let's slide it right out, like so. The outside of the manual is kind of a weird folded over version of the outside cover illustration. Inside it looks like your typical black and white manual, but the text in here has kind of a self-aware humor to it, similar to the show. Commenting on things like how it's kind of weird how you save your game at the inn, and yet you have to go to the information seller's store to load. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Why is that? Your company made the game, right? Anyway, moving on, the game itself is stored on six floppy disks. The hard drive installer isn't especially user-friendly, and you really need to consult with the manual in order to use it correctly. First, you're supposed to manually create a directory named Slayers on the target hard drive. Then copy the installer program from disk B of the game into that directory. You're given a choice of either a batch installer or an executable version, and I chose to use the executable which is named inst.exe. After copying the installer, you run it from its new location, but you need to also specify the drive letter of your source floppy drive, which in my case is drive C. Once the installer is all up and running correctly, you just need to follow the on-screen instructions to copy over the contents of all six disks in order. When installation is completed, you start the game by navigating to the Slayers directory you created and running sl.bat. The opening begins with the main protagonist of Slayers, Lena Inverse, completing a job clearing a castle of monsters by blowing the castle up. Of course, the owner of said castle is not very satisfied with this result, so Lena and her ever-present companion, Gauri Gabriev, are wandering aimlessly looking for work when they are confronted by bandits. I love the self-aware humor here when Lena accuses them of being random thugs, and as evidence she points out that they are referred to as only Bandit A and Bandit B in the on-screen text, to which one of the bandits replies, oh yeah you're right. Anyway, the bandits make fun of Lena's body proportions, which is one of the running gags in Slayers, so she takes care of them. But when she's deciding whether to let them live, they mention there's a city nearby where recently there have been rumblings of a legendary dragon whose fangs are worth a fortune. Lena forgets quickly about the thugs as she drags Gowry along to the city to find the dragon. The other Slayers characters who appear in the game are then quickly introduced at the end of the opening sequence. Slayer's regulars like Zelgadis and Amelia are here, of course, as well as Sylphiel, and Naga, who later appeared in the Slayer's movies and OVAs. Then there's also Amelia's dad, and two characters from the Slayer's light novels, which I've never read, Mina and Remy. Remy Martin. That's right, the name of the character is actually Remy Martin. 
I don't have a CRT monitor around to play PC-98 on today, but I do recall the dithered graphics of this game looking particularly good on the CRT. Nowadays, I personally like the way that PC-98 games look on the RGB upscaler that I use to capture footage. Even with the very dithered style of this game, I prefer to see the unblurred, naked truth. But yeah, many of you are going to prefer the way this one looks on a CRT. So finally, here's the title screen, where we'll choose Start. The home base of the game is the city of Wellnan, where there are a number of buildings you can visit by moving the mouse cursor. The inn allows you to recover your HP and MP, as well as save your game. There's an item shop and an information seller who will give you tips regarding whatever part of the game you're currently working on in case you're stuck. If you don't feel like paying, you can always load your game after reading the tips. Finally, a number of the buildings in the city also have characters resting there who you can ask to join the party at any time. Your first two character slots are permanently occupied by Lena and Gauri, and the third slot gets filled by whichever character you select here in the city. You can only choose one though. If you already have a character in your third slot, they'll be replaced as soon as you choose another. I'd recommend Zelgatis as a strong character. Naga is probably the most powerful, but she can sometimes leave the party suddenly when she decides she's earned enough money from the battles, which is actually why my third character slot is empty in my footage at the end of the game. The fourth character slot is reserved for a special character who will join you during each of the game's four dungeons as part of the story. These are completely original characters made specifically for the game. <laughs> Leave the city by clicking on the lower left corner and we're taken automatically to the dungeon we're currently working on. So, Slayers is a first person dungeon crawler with quite a low emphasis on the first person part which appears only in this tiny window in the corner. This game knows what the player is really going to spend most of their time looking at, the built-in map. You can not only move forward, left, right, and turn around, but also diagonally, and you control by clicking these directions with the mouse. At first I thought it might be faster if you could also control with the keyboard instead, but you know what? This works fine. I usually have to stop and think about which direction I want to go anyway. The diagonals become especially confusing to me when facing downward or sideways on the map. Slayers is a game controlled exclusively with the mouse. There's literally not a single keyboard key that does anything. So of course there are random battles here in the dungeons. The battle screen is quite nice to look at, with plenty of still artwork that appears depending on what the characters are currently doing. The battles can feel overly simple due to the fact that the only character you can control is Lena, and yet overly complicated at the same time due to the fact that Lena has about a gazillion different spells she can use, which are divided into elemental categories in order to simplify the menu. The main strategy of the battles becomes memorizing which spells work on which enemies, and making sure you don't run out of HP or MP, and that's really about it. You'll notice that Lena begins the game with a max HP of 270 and max MP of 999, and this never changes throughout the game. Slayers is a game with no experience, where the characters never become stronger. I guess this is because Lena is supposed to already be a nearly invincible master sorceress, even at the beginning of the anime. You can't have her just leveling up from defeating these puny enemies in the dungeons, it wouldn't fit with the series. So anyway, what are Lena and company doing here in this dungeon? Well, at the entrance they learned that the Chimera of the Year contest is currently taking place, and five wizards are competing to decide who can create the best Chimera using monster parts from the dungeon. Well, that's a weird plot. In addition, they're taking bets on the winner. Lena immediately places all her gold on the wizard with the highest odds, who is least favored to win. Though of course Gowry thinks this is a bad idea. On the first floor of the dungeon, they meet the wizard she bet on, named Kim, and decide to, uh, increase the likelihood Lena's bet will pay off? They have Kim join the party and assist him collecting monsters to create his Chimera. I first got this game way back in the early 2000s and made multiple attempts to play it, but never got much further than this. I could find Kim, but then I would inevitably just wander the dungeon, get bored, and give up. So this time, in order to uh, increase the likelihood I'll actually get some enjoyment out of this game, I'm going to do like Lena and freaking cheat. 20 years ago, I don't recall finding any walkthroughs available, but nowadays there's quite a good one here in Japanese, which includes complete maps of all the dungeons. Alright old friend, this time you are going down. 
The walkthrough explains that you not only have to find your way through all five floors of this dungeon, but you also have to catch four monsters to make Kim's Chimera. It shows which monsters you should catch and which floors you should attempt to catch them on. This is where the catch command in the battle system comes into play. The monsters have to be weakened to the point of near death before they can be caught. Hey, it's kinda like Pokemon. In case you forgot though, the only character you can control is Lina, so the likelihood that one of the other characters will unwittingly kill a monster before you can catch it is quite high. When a monster you were supposed to catch is killed, you can see Lina upset about it. Without a walkthrough, this is the only thing indicating which monsters you need to catch, besides maybe the information seller in town. Having to wander around in the dungeon until you randomly encounter and then manage to catch these monsters without killing them is maybe one of the more irritating parts of the game. It was a relief to learn that the catch command is never used again from the second dungeon on. So let's wrap up this first dungeon. I'll put a spoiler warning here for the rest of the story. The party finds the last monster and defeats a boss who is protecting it. Back at the city, Kim creates a very cute but also very strong Chimera and wins the contest. At the award ceremony, Kim announces very publicly that he was helped by Lena Inverse, and this causes Lena to be disqualified from her bet and lose all her money. However, the organizer of the contest, named Langren, offers to buy the Chimera for a large sum, and Lena immediately agrees. Kim's dismay that Lena sold his Chimera without his permission serves as the comedic ending to this chapter of the game. You then get to decide which of the next two dungeons you want to do first. I started with the forest to the north. In this dungeon, Lena saves a girl named Marine from bandits, but also injures her in the process and leaves her there on the ground. Soon after though, they come to a dead end in the dungeon and decide to go back and ask Marine for help. Lena heals her and she joins the party, allowing you to proceed forward into the forest dungeon, where they find a tower serving as the second half of the dungeon. Maureen seems oddly familiar with the tower, and she leads the party into a confrontation with her and the two bandits from earlier at the top. Before the battle, it's briefly teased that perhaps Maureen is secretly super powerful and has been concealing her true power, but she's soon revealed to be extremely weak after all, for comic effect. Maureen had hoped to make a name for herself by being the one to defeat the great Lena Inverse. Lena throws her from the top of the tower, but luckily for Maureen, she's too much of a comical character to actually be killed this way, and this isn't the last we'll see of her. The next dungeon is the valley to the east, where the party is joined by a woman named Junon, who immediately falls in love with Gauri. The valley leads into a cave, which has a village in it. That's a weird place for a village. They learned earlier that in the village lives an old hermit who guards a legendary dragon, so thinking they've hit the jackpot, they seek out this hermit. When they find him, he gladly offers to share his legendary dragon with them in a cup. Legendary Old Brew apparently is easily confused for legendary dragon when passed from person to person through rumors. You're probably thinking maybe they sound really similar in Japanese, but actually they really don't. It was slurred speech and rumors, combined with Lena's wanting to believe they were hot on the trail of the legendary dragon that led to this dead end. Soon after, Junon, realizing that Gowri doesn't seem too interested in her, tries to make him jealous by choosing to go along with a random person from the village instead of him. It doesn't work and Gowri and Lena move on to the final dungeon of the game, which is an abandoned mine to the south of the city. There they are joined by Lars, a soldier and apparently old acquaintance of Gowri's. Her party was killed fighting the legendary dragon, and she wants to avenge them. In this dungeon, we also meet up briefly with Kim from the first dungeon, as well as Maureen from the second. I figured Junon would make an appearance too to complete the set of former party members, but I guess not. The mine leads into the shrine of a cult who worships the legendary dragon. When they finally find the dragon, it's fighting the Chimera that they created in the Chimera of the Year contest. Their Chimera wins, and Lars is upset now that she won't be able to avenge her party herself, but Lena is more than happy to quickly set about collecting the dragon's precious fangs, announcing that dinner is on her tonight. Then they are confronted by Langren, the man who bought the Chimera from Lena earlier, who demands that she hands over the fangs. His plan all along was to use the winning Chimera from the contest to defeat the dragon and obtain the fangs for himself. But Lena easily snatches away the crystal he's using to control the Chimera, and accidentally breaks it, sending the Chimera out of control. The final boss of the game is that Chimera which we worked so hard to create in the first dungeon. I easily drained most of the HP of its three heads using Lena's Dragon Slave. 
The battles in this game, by the way, are never really difficult, as long as you have plenty of HP and MP left. <laughs> After defeating the Chimera, Lina and Gauri flee the city with the Fangs. Lina reasons that Langren probably had a bunch of moneylenders who will come looking for the Fangs if they stay there, but the remaining party members from the city are furious that Lina won't share, and didn't even keep her promise to treat everyone to dinner. As Lina flies away dragging Gauri, she announces happily that they're moving on to the next city. The end. An English patch for the game was apparently in the late stages of development as of the early 2010s, but unfortunately the project appears to have been abandoned, and now the homepage can only be viewed using the internet archive. Hopefully someone can pick up the torch on this one someday. Luckily the best part of the game requires no language patch to be enjoyed. I love the soundtrack composed by Shiori Ueno, who only seems to have a handful of game sound credits to her name, mostly for Japanese SLG and digital comic games, including the Tenshi Muyo game for PC-98, which was later ported to the PC Engine and as the first disc of the PCFX game. I can certainly see someone hearing the Slayer's soundtrack and saying, it really isn't all that great, I don't know what that PC-98 Paradise guy was raving about, but I really enjoy the happy relaxing music, even though it only uses the PC-98's monaural FM soundboard. It's also a shame that the game has some noticeable sound issues. On some PC-98 models, like the PC-98 laptop I used to use, the music ran too fast, with uneven tempo. Though it mostly runs fine on my current PC-98, the sound effects still cause one of the sound channels to cut out and can even screw up the rhythm a little bit on some parts. There's an easy fix though, Slayers uses one of the most common PC-98 FM sound drivers called PMD. The issue is due to the old and outdated version of PMD included with the game. The final version of PMD is readily available for free online, and you can simply use it to replace the PMD.com in the game's subfolder named MUS. This won't fix the sound cutting out, of course, but does significantly reduce the number of odd sounding errors. Since Slayers uses such a common sound driver, you can even take the music files directly from the game and play them by simply dragging them into any music player that supports PMD game music files, like MDX Win, KB Media Player, or even Winamp or any player that can use the proper plugin. This is how I often listen to the soundtrack while sitting at my computer back in the early 2000s. I came to love the music while using it as BGM for working or studying. But while listening to the music this way, I noticed something strange. Occasionally some of the tunes seem to have stereo sound. That shouldn't be the case since Slayers only supports the PC-98's old 26k FM soundboard, which is monaural only. Let's get to the bottom of this. Back on real PC-98 hardware, while playing the sound files on a music player like MSDP, I can hear clearly that it's actually using the stereo soundboard 86 built into this PC-98. You can even see these dial indicators turning left and right to indicate the stereo separation. Furthermore, not only do some of the sound files have stereo sound, but they also sometimes use additional sound channels only available on the stereo FM soundboards, even occasionally utilizing the built-in bass drum and cymbal samples, which are definitely not available on the old 26K soundboard. So I guess one likely explanation is that at some point they were considering adding stereo soundboard compatibility to Slayers. After all, the first PC-98 stereo soundboard, the 980173, was released three years prior to Slayers, and the later 980186 soundboard was released the year before the game. It also could be simply that the composer Shiori Ueno was just playing around with stereo soundboards when she created the sound files. Maybe she expected people would try to play the files on an external player like this one. After all, she did bother to add her name and the song titles to the files. And there even seems to be one short track which was never used in the game, as far as I can tell. This one makes especially heavy use of stereo sound.
And I should be clear that only a handful of the sound files in Slayers actually use the additional sound channels in stereo sound. The majority of them stick to the capabilities of the old soundboard, and even the files which take advantage of the additional channels still play fine on the old Minoru board, just with the additional sounds missing. Players never realized they were missing out on anything. But it's always seemed like kind of a pity to me that you can only hear these enhanced sound files using an external music player. While running the game itself, you only get the original six channels and monaural sound, even if you have a stereo soundboard. I always wondered if there isn't a simple way to fix this, and upon looking into it, I quickly figured out there is. You can ignore what I mentioned about replacing the PMD sound driver earlier, and do this instead. And you're gonna want to do this, regardless of whether you're playing on real hardware or an emulator. You're going to need PMDPPZ.com, a stereo version of the PMD sound driver Slayers uses. Here's one place you can get it now. Copy PMDPPZ.com into the MUS folder in Slayers, then go back to the main Slayers directory and edit SL.bat to use the new sound driver instead. In Windows, you can just edit it in Notepad. Personally, I like to also delete this text here too, which limits the volume of the SSG channels. Purists may argue that this gets you further away from how the game was originally intended to sound, but I find the music sounds much fuller without the SSG channels limited. I would also argue that if the composer wanted the SSG channels to be quiet, she could have just programmed them that way in the sound files. This looks more like a last minute decision made by someone else. If you're really feeling cheeky, you can even delete this part too and restore the sound driver's built in fast forward capability. Anyway, here's how the game sounds before and after the changes. Notice that this not only adds stereo sound where available, but perhaps even more importantly, the sound effects no longer cause parts of the music to cut out. As much as I love how the stereo versions of this dungeon and battle BGM sound, I still think where the soundtrack really shines are the more laid back, happy little tunes, which manage to sound great despite using only the limited monaural sounds of the older soundboard almost exclusively. Slayers is a funny game with lots of entertaining dialogue, an excellent soundtrack, and an unbelievable amount of great artwork stored on all these floppy disks. But would I recommend you play the Slayers game for PC-98? Nah, not really. You probably won't have a good time for long. The dungeon mazes are an irritating mess. With the built-in map system, you'd think it wouldn't be too bad, but here's the thing. The dungeons are absolutely loaded with invisible warps most of which will take you places you really don't want to go. Okay, so maybe just try to avoid all the warps and look for only the stairways to proceed forward instead, right? Nope, most of the dungeons have warps that are required to get to the end. And even though the warps get marked on the map automatically with these circles after you trigger them, it doesn't mark where any of them will take you. You'll have to just try to remember where each of them goes yourself, or use a walkthrough. There is also an item you can buy called a blank map, which will reveal the map of an entire floor automatically, but I find this can actually make things even worse because now you can't even see where you've been and where you haven't, so you can't even use the process of elimination anymore. And in a normal RPG, at least you'd know you're getting tons of experience while wandering around, but Slayers doesn't have experience, only gold. 
and the gold can't buy anything of much use either. There's no equipment, only healing items, temporary stat boosters, and an exit dungeon item to return to the city, which is probably the most useful item there is. There's not even an MP restoration item, which would really help to extend your time in the dungeons when Lena's MP runs out. Anyway, what I'm saying is that, while the presentation and story are great, Slayers fails to make the core RPG elements very enjoyable. And it could have been fixed so easily. Just add a leveling or equipment system and get rid of most of the warps in the dungeons, or at least add some way of marking where they go on the map. Then you would have a totally serviceable, albeit less unique, RPG. And that might be why this game was never ported to any other systems. Or it may well have been for some boring licensing reason, I don't know. I suppose if there was a CD-ROM version on the PC Engine or PCFX, we could have gotten voice performances from Megumi Hayashibara and the rest of the Slayer's cast for these funny scenes. That would be kinda cool, though having to play the game again just to hear them doesn't sound like much fun to me right now. As it is, Slayers for PC-98 is a weird game that I would really only recommend if you're either a die-hard Slayers fan or just really love the look and sound of PC-98 games like I do. And even if you do meet either of those two qualifications, you're probably going to want to use a walkthrough if you hope to get very far in this one. Personally, I am really glad to have finally settled my personal vendetta with this game after all these decades, even if I had to cheat and I will definitely continue to enjoy the soundtrack whenever I'm looking for some relaxing FM sound. Thanks for watching this episode of PC98 Paradise. I want to give a special thanks to all my patrons on Patreon, as well as those supporting the channel through the YouTube memberships we started recently. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Mr. Jakes for PC98 Paradise, and I'll see you again in the next video.